So, applying Kakutani's fixed Wien theorem, we are we are going to get to Nash's theorem. So, this is Nash one there exists a y 1 star to y n star such that j, j 1 j i of y 1 star to y n star is less than equal to j i of y i comma y minus i star for all y i in capital y i and for all i in n. This is what we are going to prove. Okay. So, the proof idea is going to be to simply apply Kakutani to R. Okay. So, what what did we, we we had just established that y is a Nash equilibrium if and only if y uh, sorry y star is a Nash equilibrium if and only if y star belongs to R of y star. That means if and only if y star is a fixed point of R. So, to show that there is at least one Nash equilibrium, all I need to do is show that R has a fixed point. Okay. So, and now to show that uh, what, how will we show that R has a fixed point? We will show that we will apply Kakudani's fixed point theorem, which means that we are going to show that if I take phi as R, all these hypotheses are satisfied. Okay. So, this is that is that is going to be the proof idea. So, we, we need to check a few things. So, let us go through them one by one. So, in order to apply Kakudani's fixed point theorem to R, we need to check that the domain of R is closed, convex and bounded. We need to check that R actually maps that set the domain to subsets of itself. We need to check that R is convex valued and we need to check that R has a closed graph. Once these, once these are checked, Kakutani will then give us that there is always a fixed point and hence there is always an Nash equilibrium. Okay. All right. So, firstly, what is the domain of R? So, domain of R, remember, was of R is y. So, R y maps uh, R maps y to subsets of itself. And so, so, R is in fact a mapping from, uh, from a set to subsets of itself, but, but what, but is this domain closed and closed, convex and bounded? So, what was Y remember? Y was simply the product of these Y i's, right? Y was the product of these, uh, these Y i's. Each Y i itself was a set of probability distributions on a finite set. So, probability distribution that means basically it is uh, every component is between 0 and 1. So, the entire each y i is basically in some box of dimension 1 lying in some box of dimension 1 in its own space. So, y being a product of all of that is in a hyper box of higher dimensions, but at the end of the day it is in some box or uh, in some bounded set in its own in its space, right. So, therefore, so since y so, since y i is is a set of is the set of probability distributions, the set of probability distributions on S i this is in fact. So, this set is therefore, y i therefore is bounded. It is also closed because you take the take a sequence of probability distributions, it will converge to a pro and a, if it converges, then the limit will also be a probability distribution. Why? Because you can see that if I take vectors y i um, say uh, y i k, these belong to y capital y i and if I take the limit as k tends to infinity uh, sorry take the limit of k as k tends to infinity as y i suppose they converge to some y i then each of these belonging to y i means that 
this equals 1 for all k. It also means that this is greater than equal to 0 for all k and therefore, if I take the limit as k tends to infinity, the limit should also be uh, should also have this property that 1 transpose that limit would be equal to 1 and that limit would be greater than equal to 0, which means which effectively implies that that 1 transpose y i will be 1 and y i will also be greater than equal to 0. So, in other words therefore, so y i is bounded because it is uh, these are probability distributions and they are all this it is closed for the same reason and then what about convexity? You take two probability distributions and take a convex combination of those two probability distributions that is another probability distribution right. You mix two probability distributions you get another probability distribution. So, which means that it is it is convex. Another way of looking at this is that remember y capital Y i is simply defined by linear equations and inequalities ok. So, therefore, it is a convex set and it is also therefore, a closed set ok. But because these uh, the distribution the what it defines is a probability uh, is a set of all probability distributions it automatically is bounded as well ok. So, in other words capital Y is closed convex and bounded ok all right. So, once capital Y is closed convex and bounded therefore, Y is also being a product of such sets is closed convex and bounded. So, with this then what we have ticked off is this, we have ticked off the first part. So, we this one we have a we have a function that maps a set to subsets of itself and it is uh, a domain to subsets of that domain and that domain is um, is a is a closed convex and bounded set ok all right. So, the first this this is done. Now, let us go to the next one. So, now we are we, we are looking at this one we need to ask is is the function is their set valued map convex valued ok. That means, what we are asking is is r convex valued ok. Convexity I just argue I, I just said that uh, it, it follows because you take convex combination of two distributions it is a convex it is a it is a dist probability distribution ok. Alternatively you can see that y here you see y i is just defined by linear inequalities and equations. So, and therefore, necessarily it uh, you know y i is a convex set ok all right ok. So, now we will be showing that R is we will show that R is convex valued. Yeah. How does Y I being convex in the transfer It follows trivially actually uh, that if uh, if a and b this is a standard property that if a and b are convex or they are a, a and b are convex or closed or bounded the product will also have inherit that property trivially actually so so uh, i just write i'll just quickly write the proof here so take any two sets a comma b are convex and take uh, now you take a point x and uh, take a point take two points x1 x2 in a cross b this one you let's write this as x1 1 x1 2 and this guy let's write it as x2 1 x 2 2. So, now if you take uh, a convex combination of x 1 and x 2, so you take alpha times x 1 plus 1 minus alpha times x 2, 
where alpha is in uh, is in uh, is in 0 1 okay. So, this is therefore, now alpha times the first uh, you know you get a convex combination of the first component. Um, so, this here would reduce to alpha x 1 1 plus 1 minus alpha x 2 1 and alpha x 1 2 plus 1 minus alpha x 2 2. So, this is in A, this the lower one is in B, the A is A B because A is convex and B is convex and so therefore, the product is also in is in A is in A cross B. No, no, no. So, the multilinearity would, uh, so this is the set of all probability distributions. The set of all probability distributions is convex. If you constrain the set of probability distributions like through a Markov chain or something, then you do not, then it is not necessarily convex. Okay. All right. So, now we want to show that R is convex valued. So, for this, let us recall, uh, go back and see what R was. So, R was the product of R, R i's. And each R i is the set of best responses of player i. Okay. So, R i of y minus i is the set of best responses of player i to y minus i. Okay. Now, this what we want to, so it is uh, to show that R is convex valued, what we will show is that each R i is convex. Okay. Each R i is, uh, is convex valued. In other words, for each for if you fix a y my if you fix a y then for every i and if uh, r i of y minus i is going to be is a convex set okay now why is this a convex set means why is the set of best responses always a convex set okay so for that we need to just carefully look at what what this what what is actually happening here okay so and this is once we understand this the next part will also follow very easily. So, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the cost of player i that is listed here that is written here it is um, it is this is it is this expectation right. Now, what we are doing is when we are evaluating the best response what we are basically say asking is we are fixing all the y minus i's ok. So, we are fixing the mix strategy of the other player and asking what is the best that this guy can do. So, if I fix everything other than uh, y i here, so fix all the y j's other than y i, then what sort of expression is this in y i? It is linear in y i, right. So, if you look at this expression as a, if you see it is as a, as a function of y 1 to y n, it is actually, it has this product of, of all the y's involved. Okay, so, it will in fact be a polynomial in y 1 to y n right because in, uh, it will be a polynomial each pro, uh, each term involving uh, a product of n n monomials right. Okay. So, this is going to be a polynomial, but if I fix the y minus i then it is linear in y i clear. So, which means that is what are this these best responses? The best responses are actually solutions of a linear program they are the ones that minimize this linear function over all the y right. So, in other words this here, so now let me go back here r i of y minus i is simply the solution set of this linear program right, it is r min of g i of this over y i in capital Y ok. And this here, this chap here, this guy is is linear, linear in Y ok. Now, if this is linear, the objective is linear in Y, what about uh, the constraints which is, which is this? capital Y i, capital Y i itself is defined by uh, two linear constraints, is defined by the requirement that y 1 transpose Y i is equal to 1 
and y i is greater than or equal to 0, right. So, if you put together this uh, these two facts, the objective is linear in y i, the constraints are also linear in y i, which means then that r i of y minus i is simply a solutions is the solution set of a linear program or a linear optimization problem. Now, if this is a solution set of a linear program, then what does this, uh, what do we know about uh, the solution set of a linear program? We know that the solution set is always going to be, uh, if there are two solutions to a linear program, then every segment, the entire line segment joining them is also going to be a solution, right. Which means that if you have two points in R i of y minus i, then the entire line segment joining them is also in R i of y minus i, right. Which means what? Which means that if you have two points in R, uh, R, R i of y minus i, the convex, every convex combination of those two points is going to be in R of R i of minus y minus i, which means R of R i of y minus i is actually convex, right. So, if two, if you take two points uh, in it, the entire segment joining it is also in that set. Uh, which which by definition makes the set convex ok. So, which means that the r i of y minus i is actually a convex set is convex and it is convex for each value of y minus i for each y minus i. So, you fix y minus i you get a convex set. So, what does this mean then? Therefore, then r itself r of y was itself r 1 of y minus 1 till r n of y minus n and each of these guys is a convex set. Each of these um, uh, factors in this product is a convex set. So, therefore, this r of y is also a convex set. And this is exactly what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that r is convex valued, right, which means that for every y, r of y is a convex set, means that r is convex valued. Okay, so let us go back to Kakutani again and let us say what he, let us see what he has to say. So, we have now knocked off this, we have shown that r satisfies this, okay, that it is convex it is convex value. 